Now, I gnarled and spit and cussed and said things that a lawyer would be in contempt of court to say if he said them in court. A Time to Kill, which was really your uh, breakout role. Uh, Sandra Bullock was quoted as saying, the cast all watches the film together. You were emotional and crying. Um, and she said she got this overwhelming sense that uh, you really missed your dad. Your reaction? I don't remember that moment. That sure makes sense that at the end of, of watching the culmination of the work that I got to do and be a part of with so many people in the film, A Time to Kill. My first film was Days Confused and that put me on a map, but Time to Kill, I understood what that meant, what that was going to mean. I didn't understand how it was gonna change my life, but I understood big changes. And I mean, I have that feeling at the end of any movie that I do now, if I appreciate the work that I did and what the story's about, I go like, two things is how I feel like, ah, I wish Pop was here with me to watch this. It would be so fun to, for Pop to have seen that. At the same time, his death, his moving on from this life happened five days after I started my first day acting on a film called Days Confused in 1992. Now there's some grace and serendipity in that for me because he, got, he at least was alive for me to begin the thing that would become more than a hobby. And so I still to this day, every time when I finish a film that I enjoy, I'm like, yep, gosh, dog, dad would have enjoyed this. He would not only enjoy seeing the final picture, I miss ha talking about scripts with him. Tell about with that movie, A Time to Kill, speaking up for the role you really wanted in the film and then in the audition being told, throw the script away. I was just coming off of, um, a major embarrassment where I had a bright idea to come in absolutely not prepared. And my plan completely backfired and I was extremely embarrassed. Um, and I vowed not to ever want to do whatever I could do to not ever feel that kind of embarrassment again. So I had prepared for this meeting with Joel Schumacher for a time to kill. The role I'd been offered was that of Freddie Lee Cobb. Kiefer Sutherland ended up playing the role. I not only was prepared for that role, I'd read the, obviously the whole script, broke it down and read the book, Time to Kill. And when I read that, I was like, this guy, Jake Brigant, the lead, that's the guy I should be. That's the guy I wanna be right there. So I remember going in saying, you need to look for an angle to go to let him know you think you should play Jake Brigant. And in that meeting, I remember saying to him, I said, Joe, I said, uh, uh, who's playing the lead, uh, um, uh, Jake Brigance? Is it? And I'd heard someone had said, mentioned the name Brad Pitt. And he goes, you know, I don't know. We haven't found the right actor for that part. Who do you think should? And this was my moment. I remember my heart breathing a bit going, this is your window, this is your window. My heartbeat starts going up, 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 up. Took a drag and I went, and looked him right in the eye and said, I think I should. And he saw me and all of a sudden I remember his hands going up in the air. Oh, that's a great idea, Matthew. You would be a great Jake Brigance, but trust me, that is never happening. The studio is never going to approve a relatively unknown for this lead, but it's a great idea. And I remember settling in going, okay, we planted a seed of that you want to play Jake Brigance because later on they could not fill the role. So the way I'd said it, the timing I'd said it, it stuck with Joel Schumacher. And then things went my way to where all of a sudden the studio became open to maybe the idea, if he can pull it off, next thing I know, a month later or so, I get a call to do a screen test. And I walked in and uh, I did this final summation as it was written and did a good job. I did a good job. I didn't do a great job. There's no magic, but I knew you just connected the dots. You just told a good story. And Joel thought the same. And then all of a sudden he goes, okay, great, 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 great. He goes, now throw the script away. Say what you would say. Now I'm arguing a case of there being a time where it, 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 it would possibly be okay in a, as a courtroom argument to say a father could kill someone if they raped his daughter. 
I was not a father at that point, but it's the only thing I knew I ever wanted to be. So I thought, what if that happened to a child of mine? And I guess my voice kind of got down, kind of like where it is closer to now. And I said, and I, I, I gnarled and spit and cussed and said things that a lawyer would be in contempt of court to say if he said them in court. But when I was, or before I was done, I was still going, I was still rolling and literally sweating in front of this jury. And Joe was got cut, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Beautiful, Matthew. That's it. And that was it. The studio saw it and approved. Now I had to get John Grisham and his wife to approve. And then they saw it. And every day the story goes, John told me his wife goes to, to, to her husband, John, who the character Jake Regans is based on, said, that's you. He's, he, he's you. That's, that's, that's the character. That's Jake Regans. Got the call from John Grisham and Jill Schumacher, who was late at night shooting on the desert. And he goes, you want to be Jake Regans? I said, hell yeah, I do. <laughs> Ran off into the desert. Tears coming down my face. Another full moon, I do believe. Took a knee, put a hand up, said, thank you. I mean, out of any moment in your your career, it was kind of that, right? Well, I mean, there have been, there have been many moments, if it, but if you're going to talk about the big sort of similar moments that shifted and opened up brand new options that were never there before, well, going up to the casting director in Austin, Texas in 1992, who I knew was in town casting days and confused, going up to him and then later on in the night getting him to say, hey, you might be right for this part, then getting that part. And then that part turning from three lines to three weeks work because Richard Linklater, the director, kept inviting me back. Look, if I don't get invited back in the role of Watterson on Days Confused, if I go do my three lines and that's it, am I sitting here right now? I don't know. Likely not. Do I get offered the role of Freddie Lee Cobb in A Time to Kill, which gets me, gets me in the office with director Joel Schumacher to then say, no, really, I think I should play the lead, Jake Brigance? I don't know. Likely not. 